Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And now that we are into what we're going to call election season, that's what we're going to talk about about elections. Now, in the Constitution, it says that the election would be the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Anyway, but now that we have gotten really crazy with COVID-19 and all of this other stuff and voting by mail, we now have a voting season. So if you are here on Oahu, the ballots will be mailed out on October 5th. And each island has a different date when they mail out the ballot. I think it's a good idea since the, the, they've been messing with, the Republicans have been messing with the post office. I think that's a good idea to stagger the mail. Anyway, so this is election season and we are going to talk about the city and county charter amendment. First, I want to introduce my guest, Christopher Edwards. And I love Christopher Edwards because he says his full name, Christopher. I have a son who has a beautiful name, Christopher, and he's Chris. So, anyway, that's so, hello, Chris. How, Hi, Marcia. You just moved, so how's your new house, your new apartment? It's quite wonderful. It's got a great breeze uh, and a fantastic neighborhood. And, you know, every day is a beautiful day. And now I have a, a beautiful view to go along with it. Oh, wonderful. Well, Chris is Christopher is part of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. And he has a lot of titles. He'll tell you all of those. <laughs> he is championing in championing the second number two uh, resolution on the charter amendment. So let me explain as simply as I can make this. The city and county of Honolulu is a corporation. And like that includes the entire island is the city and county of Honolulu. Like any corporation, they have a charter of which they go by. Any, all, all corporations have them. And every three years, I think it is, there are amendments to the charter. There's a charter commission. They hear all kinds of people with all kinds of ideas of what needs to be changed, what needs to be updated. This, unlike most uh, corporations, the city and county is alive, it's living, and their people and things change from year to year. Mm -hmm. And so this is built in to keep things up to date. I hope that's as simple as I can get it. On your ballot, there will be four charter amendments or questions, and it will ask if you want to do this, 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 and this. I am suggesting, and Christopher, you can read them all. I am suggesting that you vote yes on all of them. Now, if you leave it blank, it's a yes vote. So if you want to, if you don't agree with it, then you must put no. Otherwise, blank votes count. Now they had to go to court to have all that sorted out. So don't ask me why a blank vote counts for yes, but it does. So I, that's why we're doing the show, to go over the charter amendments and we want you to vote on them. This is your home. You need to see how it is run. So Christopher, it's all yours. You wanna tell us about the charter amendment? Sure, so um, this year, uh, Honolulu has uh, four charter amendments for the city and the county. And like Marcia said, we all get to choose if we'd like to vote yes or no on the four charter amendments. They're all um, um, 
they all so on your ballot what you will see is the four questions uh the first question i guess we should go into uh now is um shall the revised city charter be amended to establish uh, for the prosecuting attorney of the city and county of honolulu um, term limits uh, of two consecutive four-year terms um, the the same term limits that are also applicable for the mayor and for the city council members of the city and county so this question is coming up because we've had a prosecuting attorney who's had uh, 18 years in a office, lifetime, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is, uh, as Marsha points out, an entire generation. Uh, and so it, it has come to the attention of the public and they brought it to the council's uh, attention and the council decided that they would like to put this charter amendment on the general ballot so that we can update that living document that is our city charter. Um, and so we have the choice now to say, yes, the prosecuting attorney should have term limits or no, the prosecuting attorney uh, should not have term limits, which is how it is today. Uh, and so we have this choice in the general election to change our city for the long term. Uh, and in this particular case, it does make sense to me um, that the prosecuting attorney would have term limits uh, so that we can keep the ball rolling uh, and that that's not a particular job forever because it's, uh, it's an extremely powerful position, prosecuting attorney, where you're the manager of all of the city's um, attorneys. So if the police arrest you uh, and you have to go to court, uh, this is the manager of the attorneys who are in court on behalf of our uh, city's government. Uh, and so we want to make sure that that person, you know, is um, the most professional they can be and that they're not in that job forever because that's a powerful city it is. position. And let me just add a caveat to that one. The reason that um, Kay Aloha, Mrs. Kay Aloha was able to get into so much trouble because she was a deputy and the prosecuting attorney, both of them had been there so long in those positions that they were able to do things and there were no checks and balances, no, nothing to check on them. And that's how you, with that kind of tenure, you can get into a lot of trouble. So I'm sure that that is why this one was number one. And so many people testified saying we have to do something. So I'm reasonably certain that that's where this came from. And this also generates opportunity for um, the deputy prosecuting attorneys who are, um, you know, hired by the prosecuting attorney and work on behalf of the city. And for the most part, they're the ones who show up to court every day uh, to uh, prosecute uh, folks who are accused of crimes. Uh, and this, by having term limits, it gives the opportunity for those people, if they'd like to rise to become prosecuting attorney, the absolute opportunity to one day run and express their views and allow us as the public to make a decision on who we would like to have next as our prosecuting attorney. Um, because if one person gets in there and keeps getting elected and, and um, oh, a very important part about the prosecuting attorney is that oftentimes this job gets skipped when people are voting. So in the primary election, for instance, 30,000 people left blank the prosecuting attorney um, choice. And there were many choices, probably uh, six choices uh, of candidate. And I think sometimes people skip over areas that they're not as familiar with, which is why we're also going through the charter amendments so that they don't get skipped uh, in the general. Uh, but if, if hundreds of thousands of people vote for a mayor and 30,000 people skip over the prosecuting attorney, uh, in an extremely important and impactful role in our city, I think it's very important that we try to raise awareness for the prosecuting attorney and with what's going on around the country in so many cities. Uh, it's important that we're always paying attention to who our prosecuting attorney is. And uh, another name for this would be like the district attorney in a lot of areas of the country, if, if you're more familiar with that terminology. Yes. I really want as much as we can for people 
to participate at this level. Uh, the last election, we were able to go out and do workshops and all kinds of things to make people aware of the charter amendments. This time, because we can't, this is the best we can do. So, very good. Let's go to number two, which is your one you are championing. Yeah, so, so number two is written as shall the revised city charter be amended to establish a youth commission under the managing director? This charter amendment, I feel like opens up a lot of opportunities for our young people to really have a voice and a say in our city. Uh, what would happen if we pass charter uh, amendment two is a council of 15 young people between the ages of 14 and 24 uh, would be appointed by the city council members and the mayor uh, to represent the voices and the, the concerns of young people. And at the moment, people younger than 18 can't vote. Uh, and these would kind of be the representatives to bring to the attention of all of the city's committees and councils, uh, the concerns of young people. And young people have great concerns and no representation. And so uh, no dedicated representation, especially as non-voters. And so that's what this would be creating. We would be creating an opportunity and handing power uh, to younger people to voice for young people, uh, to the mayor, to the city council uh, on issues from, you know, women's issues and concerns to climate change agenda, uh, to traffic uh, and transportation, affordable housing, homelessness, the concerns of young people are actually mirror the concerns of older people. It's just that they don't have a voice and oftentimes they don't vote. Uh, and so it's very important that we have these youth representatives who can uh, bring attention to big concerns and things that are oftentimes overlooked, uh, solutions that might be overlooked mm -hmm. by older people and impacts that uh, the work of the city might be having on young people that are overlooked by the rest of us. So let's give them that opportunity. Let's give them advisors uh, who can talk to us and tell I, us. I, I love the idea. How is the, com the youth commission, uh, is it, are they voted on or do the old folks get to select? How do you, how many uh, people would be on the commission? So there would be 15 members on the commission uh, by next August, 2021, about half of them would be seated. Um, and about half of them are picked by the city council members and about half by the mayor. So it's a nine to six. So nine are picked by the city council members and six are picked by the mayor. Uh, and so we'd have half of those positions staffed by August, 2021. Yeah, uh, it says in the managing director's office, for people that do not understand the hierarchy of how the city is operated, the city and county, of course, again, back to the, um, that it's a corporation. So the mayor is the mayor. Then there is the city council, and then there's a corporation council. Like all throughout America, there's the number one person and the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the finance, which is court, court council. The managing director is really exactly what, he's, what it says. His office is around the corner from the mayor. I'm sure that they communicate regularly, uh, but that is where it happens, just as it says, managing director. And almost everything that happens within the city, and there's 9,000 employees, and I don't know how many divisions, but it all happens there. So that is a great place to be. It's a great place to learn. That's a great idea. Yeah, and I think a lot of the learning that will be happening, uh, oftentimes what one comes to realize is that there's uh, ways that the city operates and you don't learn those things until you have a job inside the city or a friend inside the city 
or um, you speak to your representative on a regular basis, your, your council member, and you, you start to learn all of the steps uh, that it takes, this would give a real jump start to young leaders to learn those steps earlier uh, and to impact our uh, democracy, our city's democracy uh, from a younger age. And it is not easy to change things. And so if we give them this particular head start, they may be able to be the best uh, leaders for our city long-term. And, and remember, these are the folks that are gonna be uh, leaders in our companies one day, leaders in our public services one day, in our nonprofits. We want them to be as educated as they possibly could be in the city's essentially business uh, so that we can have the best uh, environment and economy now, for everyone. When, when is the term? Does it begin uh, in January or when? So when it... they, they would have to be seated before August 21, uh, August 2021. Uh, half of them would have to be seated by then. And then uh, the next half would need to be seated uh, the preceding August, I believe. I, actually, it doesn't technically say, um, but they will all I be seated the, within the, the next term, The new term of the city council with five new members begins January. I just wondered if their term coincides with the new city council. Oh, no, it doesn't have to. So the, the first half of the youth commission has to be seated before August 21. Uh, it says that in the charter. Oh, okay. Uh, it's so, so they don't necessarily start in January, no. Uh, but they do start sometime in the next uh, nine or so months, it's September. Uh, uh, I guess 11 months. Okay. What is the length of the term? Or is it spelled uh, out? It's two years. Two so years. they're two year terms. These first folks who are coming in, it seems like from the wording that they serve for, um, for a year or two uh, and that it's staggered. So half go okay. in and half come out. Oh. And a big part of, I mean, they'll be able to do a lot of really cool stuff. And, and oh, yeah. it really leaves open the opportunities for them to uh, influence whatever areas they would like and to receive uh, questions from all of the city's departments uh, and then to also question those departments and directors. Uh, but who knows what direction they'll go in, but there's so many uh, excellent uh, potential candidates for this. And so I'm really excited to see who those council members pick as their picks and who the mayors pick for their picks uh, to are, help, are they regional, help staff it. Are they regional, you know, uh, from different parts mm -hmm. of the island, the students? Yeah, so nine of them would be picked by the city council members from Each the district of those district? city council members. I would, I would assume that that's how that'll oh, happen. Um, um, I would hope it's that there's that come from yeah. all over the island. Yeah. Yeah. And then it'll be very interesting to see who the mayors pick because they could really pick anyone uh, from anywhere. Uh, and so to, to see the dynamic and, and the priorities of the organization develop will be very interesting uh, moving forward. Yeah. Um, that we we have a new mayor uh, and five new council people, and that means a new managing director also. Um, usually his term, I say him, but managing director's term coincides with the mayor. Uh, so that you have all new everybody. I mean, not everybody, some of the department heads will stay the same, but the new mayor does have the option name do new department heads uh, which is a great opportunity to come in when everything is new and everything is gelling and everybody's finding their way around wherever they're supposed to be so it's it's a great opportunity is there a limit you said how many people can be on at one time yeah so there'll be 15 people 
at once um, after the first year when they all are eventually seated. And that's wonderful. This is a great opportunity. We're going to say yes on two. Yes on two. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're very excited about it. And we, we want everyone to let, you know, their church members know, uh, however yes. they... How do they get... What's the process? If I have a grandchild that says, oh, I'd like to do that. How do they... Uh, I, what's the process? There isn't a mechanism spelled out for, uh, for how to apply. I would suspect that the council members would uh, accept, you know, um, applications of some sort uh, or a phone call to let them know like, hey, I'm interested in this and this is why. Um, it, it says that the council members may appoint the person or, or will appoint the representative, uh, but I, I would suspect that those council members will come up with their own mechanisms for how to select. And that may be uh, an interest of the public to say to the council members, um, you know, we have a preference that you standardize your process on how you select your person. And that way we can maybe um, create as best we can a, a fair council of folks but uniform uh, anyway exactly yeah. and over time have a uniformity uh, and hopefully uh, this is a great idea hopefully we can make sure that it's it's fair and balanced uh, in terms of uh, now, gender and ideas and things like yeah. that your age will you, will you send out a notification notice so people know that they can apply your office, you know, so people understand what's going on, what, what this means. Yes, okay, now I voted for it, but now what? So will your office send out so, something? So we over- to the, schools, um, the schools or whatever. Yeah, we'd like to make sure that everyone knows about it. One, we'd like them to know that it exists, that it will be on the ballot and that they should vote yes for it. Uh, after that, we would like to see that it, you know, continues its prominence. I mean, its budget is essentially picked by the mayor. And so the mayor gets to choose, you know, how much money to send over to this uh, youth commission and also how to uh, deliver staff to them and how those staff resources, you know, are they full-time like they are in other municipalities? Uh, and this has been done before. Uh, there's one on Kauai and there's one in San Francisco, a youth commission. Uh, and it's very important that the, that the community after we all vote yes and this comes to fruition, that we make sure that it is resourced and is not left out in the cold because yes. if the public is not watching and if it is not transparent, then uh, it may not get the funding that it needs to be successful at its priorities. Uh, and so we want to, you know, make sure that they have priorities that are of interest to them and then make sure that they're funded uh, to, to, to do well, those things. Okay, and they'll be creative, starts, I'm sure. All funding starts with the city council, the budget committee. So that's the one you're gonna have to campaign. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to, we only have a few minutes left, so let's take a oh. look at the other two. Yeah, so charter question number three is, shall the revised city charter be amended to allow the Honolulu Ethics Commission to control its own budget after it has been enacted? And so uh, the way the budget works is uh, once it's signed off on by city council and the mayor, it goes into effect but the mayor can control uh, and revise a lot of those funding uh, allotments because just through uh, the power of being the executive and the needs of the city can change. The, this charter amendment would mean that once it's approved by the city council and the mayor, the ethics commission gets its budget, uh, end of story. And then that director of the ethics commission can utilize their budget. And, the important factor on this is, uh, one, the prosecutor's office already has this uh, strength 
in its um in its rules it's yeah. allowed once its budget comes to it it is its budget it, it can't be revoked or removed or and moved to a different uh, priority of the administration and so it the ethics commission watches over our public officials uh, to make sure that they're uh, appropriately filing their documents and folks that are influencing a uh, government like lobbyists are filing their documents and being as transparent as possible uh, and so it's very important that these folks have their budget to do their work and don't need to worry about uh, it being revised from under them. And so I would say vote yes on charter question number three as well uh, for the okay, health and transparency of the city. Let's see about four. Uh, number four, uh, shall, four, shall the revised charter be amended to require ethics commission staff to be appointed based on merit principles, but exempt from the civil service position classification plan and to have the salaries of all ethics commission staff set by the ethics commission a uh, subject to these specified limitations. Uh, I'm saying yes. We should okay. put yes on this one so that the Ethics Commission gets to manage their own. Really. Uh, we've had so many problems over the year with the Ethics Commission, what they can do, what they can't do, and you can, what's the budget, who's on it. And it gets messy, so I'm saying yes on this one, on number four. All right. Yeah. And that's it now. Again, um, Eric, we only have a minute left. Would you put up a picture of the, yes, that one. Um, on this picture, and this is also, if you go to the Office of Elect Elections, this is the map that shows where the deposit, all the yellow canisters where you can just put in your ballot, just boom. Uh, it's safer than the post office because the post office is going through some crap. Um, but this, you can drive right up to the yellow box, put it in the chute, and it is picked up every day. It's sealed, and somebody from the Office of Elections comes unlocked, picks it up every day, so you know that your ballot is safe. And they're all over the city, all over the island. Um, if it's in a city park, the parks are locked at a certain time. So you have to be sure you get there before that time. Um, I think it's wonderful. We did it the last election and it worked very well. Uh, the ballot again on Oahu is on the 5th. Fill it out real quick, put it in the box and you're done and you're safe. And there's a so, verification step, Marsha where you can go onto the Honolulu uh, website to check to see if it's been counted. Well, they can't and count until the day of the election. Legally. If it's been received, received. Received. the word I should have used. Received, yeah. yeah. Legally, they're not supposed to count until the day of the November 3rd or whatever it is. Um, I think, we don't know this, but when the legislature moved to having um, mail in. I don't think that they ever thought we'd have COVID and all this other crap. No. Uh, so they didn't change that. That that we have to count on the election day. However, thank you, Christopher. Thank you so much for doing this, spending this time with us, and we keep in touch. Let us know how it's going with the youth commission and. Anything else we can do to assist? And thank you, audience. Thank you all that have been with us all this time. Remember, vote, vote, vote. Thank you, and aloha, and we'll see you next time.